Hi, Greg Perry, the antiquarian horologist. Uh, welcome to the uh, conservation studio. Uh, let's take a look at one of my favorite specimens. It's been here for about 10 years. It's, it's one of, in my collection, uh, a, shin, a chinoiserie clock dating around 1772. And when it came to me, when I purchased the clock, all of this decoration you're seeing in general, just the gold, just as we look back and take a look, all this gold was muted by by coats and coats of uh, varnishes and shellacs and, and various things. So this is um, the culmination of probably three months in the studio of cutting back and carefully cleaning all of the gilded surfaces and reapplying some of the gilded surfaces here. Um, this, it's not for everyone, but it's an absolute masterpiece. I've seen nothing like it. And this, um, this was actually done in China. This is not your typical Japan, so we're going to call this a chinoiserie case. And we also looked at this mechanism downstairs. This is a petite sonore that's uh, striking, <coughs> striking the four, you know, one, two, three, four uh, on the quarters and then strikes the hour every time around. So it's not a grand sonore. So, and, and as I mentioned in that video, this was the largest uh, dial I've ever seen. This was 23, about 23 by 17 inches. So look at this dial span. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, typical color they would have painted on the inside was an off red sometimes. For a lot of these chinoiseries, even green we've, we've seen in the studio here come in. You know, green cases on the outside, red on the inside. So a little bit crazy. Um, but all this has been uncovered. And I kid you not, when we initially got this, none of this could be seen. It was just coated with a millimeter or so of old dried finish. And all this came to light all the way up at the top. So absolutely a masterpiece, phenomenal. Again, it's not for everybody, but, and I understand that. But, uh, so what do we have here? We have Yerushi lacquer. We do not have a shellac base. So I studied for, uh, for a summer with, with one of the leading Yerushi lacquer specialists, um, a Vietnam, Vietnamese lady. And she's probably one of the number one people in the world at Urushi Lacquer doing new art and doing restoration. Uh, and I must add, again, when doing restoration on Urushi Lacquer, if anyone does it, this stuff is highly poisonous. So this is based on the sumac tree. So the Urushi tree found in Japan, China, other Asian countries, Vietnam. Um, what they would do is they would actually drill a hole in the, in the tree, put a spigot in, and they could get five, six gallons out of a mature tree every year. And it comes, it's a white, thick, milky substance. And they put it on coat after coat after coat as the base. And when it dries, it dries black. But it dries in moist conditions because it's coming from moist areas, generally speaking. Um, so when you're doing it in the studio, you have to have almost a rainfall uh, down one whole wall. You'll have water cascading down, say, uh, a plastic tarp on the wall to, to hydrate the air in the room considerably to aid in the drying of this. It can't dry too quickly. So that's just how it happens. So the Urushi tree is highly poisonous. So if you think that the little uh, uh, sumac in your yard here in America is poisonous, when you get this on you, a couple drops, if you, we rehydrate this, we use an abrasive, uh, some sandpaper on this, um, and then put some water and it becomes liquid form and gets on you literally in an hour, I'll have an entire outbreak of one arm. And I'm not so susceptible to, to uh, poison sumac. And uh, literally, you know, 10, 20 drops, you may be going to the hospital for, for a steroid shot. So uh, that's how bad it is. So it's very caustic. And during the process of these cases being decorated as they were flown, not flown over, as they were boated, sailboat over for Europe in the 18th century, thousands and thousands of Asian artists have died just in the application of uh, the decoration of these cases. So let it be known. So it was a very risky venture. No one seemed to know why. Or maybe they were so dispensable they didn't care. They had so many people. Who knows? So nevertheless, this is done in Yurushi lacquer, not your typical shellac with Japaning. But just notice the original detail in this. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And I will show you the door. It's on the inside yet. And uh, we'll go down the case here. And the, 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 the texture on the outside of this case is absolutely phenomenal. And let's go down to the base panel. Uh, it, is, it is an absolute masterpiece. And we'll just let the camera scan all the way down to the floor and 
and over and up. And I'm going to pull the door out in the meantime. So, so take a look at this. Absolutely phenomenal. And the raising is done with gesso, very little gesso, but very little in height in raising goes, but the raising is everywhere. This is like a, a bamboo effect and it's raised, it's raised, it's raised, it's raised here, here. The tassels are raised. So there's a, a, a lot of carving. The branches are raised, the pagoda, the pagoda roof is raised. So a lot of sculpting is going into the gesso placed over the Yerushi lacquer base. And then a little bit of 22 karat gold dust has been added where things were missing. And there was a, there was a tremendous amount missing. I probably have around $5,000 in gold uh, on this case alone to do redo. So, uh, and in a very different shaped uh, door, absolutely. So just imagine putting a, a, an LED light on this. Uh, phenomenal. Let me get this in here safely and we'll, we'll take a look at the col colonnettes for the hood. So here's one of the colonnettes in the front. And uh, so the colonnette was, one colonnette was missing, so I had to turn this as a reproduction, a copy. And again, you can see the Yerushi lacquer on this and even, even the raised gesso up the, uh, the colonnette. So there's, on this piece, there's no place that's been quite left unturned. And I'm going to drop down for the, the door here. Absolutely phenomenal. So what we don't have is we don't have old wavy glass in here. This is how it came, and that will be replaced. So, and this is how it came from the, uh, from the auction house. And we do have a locks. They've uh, been rebuilt here, and they will be going in. So... I should put this other one down, but, and that's how she's going to look. So we're going to do further updates on this um, when we get the movement totally finished and we get it hinged off, we get it locked, and uh, we'll do an update video on this. And the other thing is I want to show everybody is that in the sides, they actually have uh, brass cutouts for the, you know, for soundboards coming out, so it's not wooden frets. And it's brass, and it's all cut out by hand, for a jeweler saw back in the day, hand filed. And then fabric would go over that, probably a burgundy or, or a green. So um, so making, again, the distinction between Yerushi lacquer and, and uh, you know, quote, Japaning. And we have uh, probably another seven to ten uh, Japan clocks we're going to examine and go over in upcoming videos. And we'll do a contrast and comparison of those. Greg Perry, the antiquarian horologist, signing off.